everyone. Texas Deacon here. Thank you for joining me. Hope you had a wonderful day in the Lord. If you didn't, it's your fault and no one else's. I'm going to be talking about a touchy subject today. Every time it's brought up, it gets a lot of attention and you get a lot of different opinions and views on it. I, of course, am talking about tithing. Tithing of your money. And I'm not talking about in this lesson tithing of your time or your talents. That's the 10% that God says belong to Him. Now, please, please understand, God does not need your money. What He needs is you to be faithful in giving. Because where your heart is, that's where, where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. I'm going to read that scripture later on. The title of today's lesson, Enemies of the Christian Church, number two, tithing. The scripture reading is Malachi 3.10. And if you have trouble, uh, come on over here. Bring all tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and try me in this. God said to try him, to test him. Says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open up for you the windows of heaven, and pour out for you such blessings, that there will be not room enough to receive them. Now that's God himself speaking. And if you can't believe God, who can you believe? A lot of people will say that tithing was nailed to the cross when the devil be lies. Another the group of people will say, well, tithing was Old Testament. Also, another big lie of the devil. They're both wrong. The only thing that was nailed to the cross are your sins. And then only when you get down on your knees and ask humbly for your sins to be forgiven, you must have a contrite heart. Now, the word contrite is not a word we use every day, and so I looked it up. I like to find out the exact meaning of uh, of the words contrite, and I was a little surprised. Feeling deep sorrow or remorse for having sinned or done wrong is actually a religious word. A deep feeling of remorse for having sinned or done wrong. Someone asked, is not to tie the sin? And I say, yes. Then they'll respond, well, then I will won't tithe, I will sin, and God will forgive me. Well, let me tell you, let me give you my take on that. My response is that you're making a mockery out of God. And why did I choose the word mockery? We're going to read Galatians 6 and 7. Oh, come on here. Yeah, here we are. Galatians 6 and 7. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever a man sows. He will also reap. So, don't, don't, don't be doing that, okay? Uh, anytime you go up against God, you're going to lose. Remember that. He's right all the time. And don't try to find loopholes in the Bible. And don't try to find technicalities. And just don't play games. If an individual... This is my opinion. <coughs> Excuse me. 
excuse me, I got a little bit of a cold. If an individual attends services regularly, even though he doesn't really want to be there, and if that individual tithes 10% and gives a little extra when the, when the need is there, even if he does it with a little resentment, it's my personal belief that I can show you a person that in a few years is going to be a great soldier in God's army. Other people disagree with me on that, but no, that's my take. Now, let's take a look at tithing. That 10% that God says is His. Studies have shown, and these figures will vary from study to study, but they'll go something like this. 10% of the congregation gives 90% of the offering. The, the, uh, and that's what it takes to operate a modern church. We live in big buildings that are heated and air conditioned. We have a parking lot that costs 150000 I know, I help pay for one. That means that 90% of the congregation is giving only 10% of the offering, of the money. Which group are you in? Are you in the 10% that gives 90 or the 90% that gives 10? Let's take a look at that uh, 10% group. You get a paycheck. Well, a direct deposit, paycheck, or whatever. The amount you take home is usually what we consider our take home, and that's what we tithe on. The, but that is a figure that after income tax is taken out, and vote and state tax in some states that have state tax, Texas doesn't. That's after you pay your Social Security or your retirement, your health insurance, your life insurance, and maybe some savings on the savings bonds, and there's other things like union dues and whatever. Most Christians tithe on what they take home. That is the net, not the gross amount. And that's probably not going to change it, so I'm not even going to get involved with that. I'm going out on a limb now. I'm staying out my neck just a little. And, um, and when it comes to Scripture, that's a dangerous thing to do, okay? I'm going to do it because I love you, even though I don't know you and never seen you. I love you because you watch my programs, and I know that, or you wouldn't be listening right now. First, you must attend church regularly. That there is a must. And if you're not a tither, not part of the uh, the ninety per, uh, not part of the ten percent, but a part of the ninety percent of the congregation that together give only ten percent. I'm going to help you to change that. Excuse me. <coughs> I suffer in winter times. I do. You say you're a Christian. And you say the Bible is God's word. And it is. You say God speaks to us through the Bible. You say that with your lips, but you don't say it with your heart. That's the problem right there. If you believed it in your heart, you'd be doing a whole lot of things in your life differently. And tithing is a big one. You would change. I said that when I started this series that my goal was to not only to recognize some of the problems in the Christian church, but also offers solutions, and I'm going to do just that. <coughs> Excuse me again. <coughs> now, if you're one of those people that gives 2%, you usually you drop it in a plate and hope no one sees how little you put in. Don't You don't even fill out an envelope. You don't give it in the form of a check. Are you too ashamed to let people know what you give? Start putting in that envelope. Start getting a record made of what you give. You, you 
on the income tax that way. Remember that God has had promised to pour out blessings on you for the 10%. You might live on a tight budget. A lot of people do. Let's take a look at some budgets, okay? Please, please, please don't misunderstand me. I'm not judging because we already have a judge and last time I checked, he did not need any help. I'm just going to point out a few things where people waste money. You smoke? Cigarettes are addictive expensive. Do you drink alcohol? Do you abuse prescription drugs or use illegal drugs? Hey, Christians do all these things. Do you eat out too many times a week? And do you say it's just as cheap to eat out as it is to cook at home? That's another lie from the devil. And that's one there is I'm guilty. I eat too much. Do you buy shoes and clothes even though you have a closet full already and don't really have a place for the new ones? That's where most women fall short. Us men, we spend money on the cars. Do things like take a good set of wheels and tires off and put on another set because it looks better, we think. Had not made the car any better, it just looks better and spend a lot of money doing it. What about the credit card balance? Is it paid off every month or, or is it growing? Do you party a lot? Do you buy expensive items without carefully shopping? I was guilty of that one within a few months ago. Do you buy things you never used? All these things I mentioned above came from me, my friends, and my relatives, so I'm not being judgmental, except I'm judging me and mine. We can all do better with our money if we just try. I once read a little statement that really stuck with me many, many years ago. And it said, a lot of people know how to make money. Very few people know how to spend it. Excuse me. <coughs> so, tithing regularly. If you start out with that, uh, group that only puts 2% in, try adding a percent. Make it 3%. A few weeks down the road, let's make it 4%. Three or four paydays after that, let's make it 5 You see where I'm heading. Tied regularly, you don't want to miss all the blessings that God has for you. And one of the things that I suggest you do Get yourself an envelope and stamps and have them available. Have the envelopes already addressed to your church. And when you're sitting down paying your bills, just write a check and put it in the envelope that's already stamped and addressed. Make it easy on yourself. And we have one more scripture reading. Luke 12:34. This is Jesus Christ himself speaking. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Put your heart in church. And don't wait around about it. We're getting near the end times. Closer and closer. Time to shape up, okay? You give my word tonight. Some very serious thought, okay? So until next time, may God continue to bless and forgive the United States of America. May God continue to bless the Republic of Texas. And may God continue to bless you and yours.